Hello again. On to Genesis 25 today, and we get a sense of the swift passing of the generations as we've been seeing in the last couple of chapters. Uh, we had earlier the death of Sarah. Now we have the rest of Abraham's life just presented in a very speedy form, and then the death of Abraham. And it turns out that Abraham has many other descendants. Uh, and yet there's uh, an indication here that really everything goes to Isaac. So yes, he gave gifts to, um, to the descendants of his concubines, but uh, it was very clear to Abraham that Isaac was the child of promise. He was the one who was in the line of the covenant of Almighty God. So Ishmael, though, is also Abraham's son and has descendants. And Ishmael, uh, he was an important man in his day, but in terms of these descendants, we know almost nothing about them. And there is no continuing community that we're able to honestly uh, mark from, from each of the descendants of Ishmael. So it is interesting that with Isaac, the situation is so very much different. And we, we are treated now to the next generation, to the story of Esau and Jacob. So Isaac is married to Rebekah. And Rebecca, after some time, she she was uh, she was barren. But after some time, uh, Isaac prayed for her. The Lord granted his prayer. Rebecca, uh, his wife, conceived, and she conceived twins. And there was such a struggle, a battle in her womb between these two, that she actually inquired of the Lord as to what in the world was going on. And the Lord spoke to her and said this, two nations are in your womb and two peoples from within you shall be divided. Uh, from within you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. The older shall serve the younger. So you know, even with twins, there's a firstborn and the firstborn was Esau. But then uh, grasping onto his heel is Jacob. And Jacob will eventually be Israel. Esau will be uh, the beginning of the nation of Edom. Uh, so these two boys, right from the beginning, they're just not the same. And as they grow up, uh, one is more the favorite of his father, and that's Esau, the firstborn. But uh, Jacob said here to be a quiet man, and he's the favorite of his mother. Rebecca loved Jacob, it said. Um, and at some point along the way, we have this incident that's recorded for us. Um, of course, Esau, as the firstborn, according to the custom of the day, he has the birthright. And yet Jacob, you know, figures out a way to get that birthright. And Esau apparently doesn't value that birthright very much because he comes in um, and... Uh, from the field and he is hungry. He says, give me some of that stew. Jacob's there, he's, he's, got, he's cooking stew. And he uh, said, give me some of that stew, I'm, I'm exhausted. And Jacob says, yeah, fine, sell me your birthright. He said, what good is my birthright? I'm about to die. So I'm famished, I'm starving to death. Give me that stew, sells his birthright. Well. Jacob takes that seriously. I'm not sure Esau did. It says, it says here at the end of the chapter, Esau despised his birthright. See, in these stories, we have more than just two brothers. Uh, we have more even than just Israel and Edom. What we've got is the story in this fallen world of God's providence as he works out his saving purposes for his elect and also exactly how those who are not the elect factor into that story and display through their actions what their values really are and see esau displayed 
that the promise, uh, the birthright, all that was there for the future was not as important to him as a bowl of stew when he was hungry. So we, we need something more than just this world and Jesus has secured for us um, what was his by right. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done for us. And we see the difference between the church and the world in terms of the value system, particularly regarding eternal life. But now your son has granted to us the gift of life that he has won for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed and live out your values as a Christian today.